All right. Let's answer this question. This is another one of those questions where I messed it up. <laughs> Disregard the hair. I may or may not have just woken up. All right, so this question kind of bothers me, but it's like I'll probably never forget it now that I know how to do it. So let's just let's just go through this carefully. Uh, we have a random variable x, which represents the healthcare cost. Okay, and this is the cumulative distribution function given, describing the healthcare cost. So as you can see, this is an exponential CDF. You should recognize that uh, x is greater than zero. Deductible is twenty. Um, they want to know something about the reimbursements. This is also the same thing as the insurance payment, the insurance benefit. They come up with all different ways of saying this. It's all the same thing. So this is the insurance payment. This is how I, the notation I always use. This is the reimbursement. So what are the reimbursements here? This is the tricky part, in my opinion. In my opinion. So the first part is easy. They tell me um, the insurance is it reimburses uh, the full amount of the losses uh, less than the deductible. So a typical situation there actually. So we're going to reimburse uh, all of the losses minus the du deductible uh, as long as the losses are between 20 and 120. So for 20 less than the losses less than 120. That part is pretty straightforward if you ask me. This is the, the trickier part. And then, so it's like, the way you have to think about this in my opinion is that the sort of this policy kind of ends in a way, and then after this, we're going to reimburse half of losses after 120. So you may be thinking, okay, well then, I'm just going to pay, uh, say, sixty dollars if the losses, or sorry, uh, you're going to pay uh, sixty-five dollars if the losses are 130. So sorry, let me back up a second. I don't want to think about this as uh, ending. These are the same insurance policy. Actually, I want to think of this as continuing. So let me let me show you what I mean. And I apologize for being confusing. But the idea is that if losses exceed 120, say they're 130, then what is the insurance company going to pay for that? They're only going to pay half of the losses that exceed 120. So if it's 130, we're going to pay five because it's ten dollars more. The reason is they're already paying for 120. They're already paying this much. So if the losses are 130, what are they going to pay? Well, they're going to pay 100 for the part that goes up to 120. Then they're going to pay five more for that extra 10. So let me write this down, and then we'll go through and uh, show you what I mean. So what we're going to do is we're going to do one half of uh, the losses minus 120. So this is 120, um, x being greater than that. Confusing if you ask me. Maybe I'm just stupid. I don't know. Maybe I'm just thinking about this the wrong way. But if you ask me, it's a little bit confusing. But if you think about it, it does make sense. So let's just before we even get to the question, let's just get a handle of what I'm trying to say here. So let's suppose, um, so just sort of um, some observations. If, if, what happens if the loss is equal to 130? What is the payment going to be? Well, if the loss is 130, the insurance is going to kick in a certain way when the losses are, are less than 120. So we're going to kick in this amount for the losses that are less than 120. Okay. So then the insurance payment is going to be what I'm going to kick in for less than 120. So I'm going to kick in 100 for the part that's less than 120, okay? And I can even, this wasn't included right here, it doesn't actually matter, okay? What am I gonna include in after that? Now I have 10 losses that are, are greater than, uh, that are greater than uh, 120. So this is gonna be plus uh, one half times 130 minus 120, right? So this is equal 105. And right here, I mean, you can say this is uh, this is 120 minus 20. So I hope this isn't confusing. I'm using these formulations right here, right? I have this formulation and this formulation. So we're saying, again, let me reiterate. We're saying if the loss is 130, for the loss is between 20 and 120, I'm going to kick in, right? 
I'm dealing with a loss of 120. I'm just gonna subtract that, and that's what I'm gonna pay. I'm gonna pay 100. But then I'm gonna add that to, now I'm gonna deal with the losses that exceed, okay? So I'm up to 130, so I'm gonna do 10 uh, times a half equals 105. All right. Now, now what? So let's actually look at what the question wants. The question wants me to, well, they're gonna define a function capital G. G is defined to be, G of x is defined to be, this notation means defined to be, this is typical mathematization, is the probability uh, that the insurance payment, in other words, the CDF of the insurance, the reimbursements, uh, less than or equal to x, given that the reimbursements are positive. So this is actually what we want. Well, not almost. We want the this is the CDF, but specifically they want me to find uh, g of 115. g of 115. g of 115 uh, is equal to the probability that the insurance payment is less than 115, given that the insurance payment is positive. But what is that equal to? This is a conditional probability. Use the definition. This is equal to the probability uh, that both of these are true simultaneously, meaning 0 is less than, xp is less than 115, divided by uh, probability xp greater than 0. This is what we want. Find it. Let me give myself some more room. Okay, so let's find that. This is some more, in my opinion, the tricky, tricky business. Okay, so um, we need to deal with these individually, individually. So first, let's deal with the easier part, in my opinion, which is this, the denominator. So first, when is the payment greater than zero? The payment is greater than zero. The reimbursement is greater than zero. Well, when do I start making a payment? That's all you need to ask yourself. If the losses exceed the deductible. So if x is greater than 20. So this is easy. So hence, hence the probability that the reimbursements are greater than zero is equal to the probability that x is greater than 20, uh, which Again, we just use the CDF. Convince yourself. I mean, there's not a lot going on. It's just uh, this is 1 minus the probability x is less or equal to 20. Use the CDF that we're given, which was capital F of x. This will tell you that this is e to the negative uh, 20 over 100. Okay? So this is from the CDF. All right, this was using using f x x equals 1 minus e to the negative x over 100. Easy peasy. Easy peasy right there. This is the harder one. So second, when is the payment uh, less than 115 but greater than 0? This is the part that confused the hell out of me. And now it makes perfect sense. It's usually what happens, light bulb moment. Um, what's going on with this? Think about this for a second. We have sort of have two parts for the insurance payment. Okay? When the losses are between 20 and 120, we have one way of paying, but then after that we have another way of paying. And when the losses are between 20 and 120, the insurance payment goes up to the losses minus 20. So the insurance payment goes up to 100. So this implies that the zero, uh, zero is less than, the payment is less than 100. This is the part where the loss is between, uh, the loss is between uh, 20 and 120, okay? Um, and, and what is the other part? We're gonna pay an extra, an extra, well, it goes up to 100, we're really gonna go to 115. We wanna pay a total of 115, so I need to add on another, one, another 15. So zero less than, 
and the insurance payment is less than 15. Less than 15. We're going to pay up to 100, then we're going to pay an additional 15. <coughs> so in this case, remember, this is true. This is true. Uh, if, well, what is the insurance payment between 0 and 100? This means that 0 is less than x uh, minus 20, uh, less than 100. And when is the insurance payment over here, when are we kicking in uh, after we've paid 100? After that, we're going to take 1 half, 1 half of the losses uh, that exceed 120 is less than 15. Okay, just solve these. So this tells me that 20 is less than x is less than 120. And over here, if I multiply by a 2 and then add 120, this is going to give me 120 is less than x uh, is less than or equal to uh, 150. So the sort of deduction you can make here is that thus, zero, if the insurance payment is between uh, zero and 115, this implies that the loss is between 20 and what? And 150. And 150. It's weird stuff to really think about it this way. If you ask me, it's kind of weird to think about it this way. But again, if you really take the time to think about it, I think it does make sense. Okay. All right, so I'm not going to say too much more about that. I just wanted to solve the problem because we're pretty much done. Pretty much done. So let's write down what we have. We're pretty much there. So we have, so we have what it is we're looking for, let's just sort of recap, right? We're looking for the probability uh, that the insurance payment is less than 115 given the insurance payment is positive. And this is equal to uh, the probability uh, that zero is less than the insurance payment is less than 115 divided by the probability that the insurance payment is greater than zero. But on the other hand, this is equal to the probability that zero is less than uh, the loss, sorry, 20 is less than the loss, less than 150, given what we just said, divided by the loss being greater than 20. Now this is easy because we have the CDF. We're pretty much there. This is nothing now. There's absolutely nothing now. So, Hopefully you have some experience with dealing with uh, the CDF in a situation. And it's exponential uh, distribution, so things turn, tend to be really quite nice. Uh, this is gonna end up being, um, this is gonna end up being e to the negative 20 over 100 minus e to the negative uh, 150 over 100 divided by e to the negative 20 over 100. Whatever, do it on the calculator. This is approximately 0 0.727. So there it is. Comment, like, tell me what you think about it. Tell me your thoughts. Uh, tell me if it makes sense. Tell me if uh, you have a better way of doing it. Um, the solution on the SOA website is not satisfactory to me. So. This is me trying to make sense of the question. Thank you for watching.